again. There have been several videos in this series now about how to calculate area moments of inertia and centroids and things like that of beams. One of the questions that comes up a lot is what if I have a beam made out of more than one material? Now this happens a lot. It's easy to imagine a beam that's maybe glued together out of two different kinds of wood or riveted or welded together out of two different kinds of metal. It happens all the time. Well, it would be good to know how to handle that. So that's what this is going to be. I'm going to show you how to do this, and we're going to use a really simple example. Here's a rectangular beam, and let's, let's pick some really easy uh, dimensions here. That's 50 millimeters, and that's 100 millimeters, okay? If you uh, insist on thinking about this in English units, it's basically 2 by 4. It's about that big, okay? This is my eraser, but that's more or less 2 by 4. All right, so here we go. We've got a beam, simple rectangular beam, no problem, except let's make this one out of two different materials. Let's say there's a seam right there, and this is welded, bonded, I don't know, pixie dust. Somehow you stuck these two things together. And let's make this end steel and this end aluminum. Or if you're in the UK, Ireland, or one of those places, aluminium. I'm going to call it aluminum. Um, so there we go. Now, I don't know how to solve that one. If you've been noticing the pattern that happens in a lot of these videos, a lot of these sample problems, there are a lot of cases in which we have a problem we don't know how to solve, and the way we attack it is we, tr we transform a problem we don't know how to solve into one we do know how to solve, and we solve that one. Right? And that transformation means I'm going to take one problem, I'm going to turn it into another problem that has the exact same answer, but I understand the solution method. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this, don't know what to do with it. Over here I'm going to draw an equivalent beam that will behave exactly like this one, but I'm going to change it in a way so I do know how to solve it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a beam made out of two materials that I don't know how to analyze, I'm going to draw an equivalent beam made out of one material that I do know how to analyze. Okay? If it's only made out of one material, I'm in business. We know how to do, calculate uh, centroids and area moment of, moments of inertia of fairly complicated shapes. You, know, you just divide them up into little boxes and you go through the, the, that box adding process we've seen before. So that's the big idea here. Change this into a beam with one material, different shape, but behaves exactly the same way under load. That's the transformation we're going to make. Now, in order to do this, I've got to notice one thing. All right, the elastic modulus of steel is about 210 gigapascals. It depends on where you look, but it's around that. Sometimes you'll see 205, 207, whatever. But you'll see in a second why I picked 210. It's, it's, it's going to make the numbers work out. Elastic modulus of aluminum is 70 GPA. Well, I can't help noticing that that number is three times that number. That is, elastic modulus of steel over the elastic modulus of aluminum is three. Right? That means this piece here is three times as stiff as that piece. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere. If I could pretend this is made out of aluminum and change the geometry so this was three times as stiff as that, I could make a beam out of one material then I could analyze it. I know what to do then. So that's the transformation I'm trying to make. Well, how do I make this three times stiffer than this? Well, I could make it taller, right? Because the stiffness is a function of height cubed. Okay, remember that 112 bh cubed? Well, that's not going to work out too well. There's no convenient number here. I could do it, but it's not convenient. The other thing I can't help noticing is that that 112 bh cubed thing, that means that stiffness is proportional to width. So if the width of this were three times that, and this were made out of aluminum, I would have an equivalent beam, one that would act the same, even though it's made out of one material. So that's what I'm going to do. This is, I'm going to transform that, that, that rectangular beam into this beam. Okay, with that being 150 millimeters now, that being 50, and that being 50, and that being 50. Okay? Now, this beam is not really what we have. Physically, it looks like this. Mathematically, if I make this whole thing out of aluminum, how do I do this? It has one-third the elastic modulus of this. 
I'm in business. I'm going to get the same answer now. Problem I don't know how to solve transformed into a problem I do know how to solve. So there we go. Now, for just reasons of good form, let's go ahead and uh, grind all these numbers out here. Okay? So we'll start by doing finding where the centroid is. Okay, now, quick glance. Well, the centroid of the lower box is right there. The centroid of the upper box is right there. I think I numbered these as 1 and 2. So I'll number that box 1 and that box 2. That's 50. Let's see, that's going to be y. So I would think that the centroid of the entire box has to be between there and there. Okay, that's 25 and that's 75. Okay, so it's got to be somewhere in between there. I don't know, 70 maybe would be a good answer. So wherever the centroid's going to wind up, it's got to be between those. Okay, that's my sanity check. Well, it's sent, the, the expression for finding a centroid is I sum the uh, centroids of the individual boxes times the area of the boxes over the sum of the areas. Well, there's only two boxes here, so this is pretty straightforward. Centroid of the first one is 75 millimeters. So I've got to do this and uh, keep my units there. 75 millimeters times the area of that box, so it's 150 times 50. Okay, that's box one, okay, the first box. Do the same thing for the second box. The centroid is 25 millimeters above my assumed axis there. And I multiply that by the area times 50 millimeters times 50 millimeters. So again, location of the centroid, base height. Location of the centroid, base height. All right, divide all that stuff by the area of the two boxes. Okay, there's the first box and the second box. Okay, so there we go. There's the sum of the areas down there. Just a quick check on the units. That's going to be millimeters, millimeters, millimeters. Millimeters cubed up here, millimeters, whoops. Millimeters squared down here, I'm going to get millimeters cubed divided by millimeters squared. Going to get a unit, units of millimeters, and that's right, and it's uh, 62.5 millimeters is y bar. Okay, that's good. That makes sense. It's between those two, a little bit above there. That's quite believable. All right? Don't have any problems with that. So I got the centroid. I now know that y bar is 62.5 millimeters. All right, last thing I got to do is crank out the area moment of inertia of the whole shape, and that's going to be the sum of I1. Well, here I'll just write it out. It's so short, there's only two boxes. I1 plus A1 D1 squared plus I2 plus A2 D2 squared. All right? And I can, if I had more boxes, I could just keep adding terms there. That's the area moment of inertia of box one, area moment of inertia of box two. Area of box one, area of box two. If you remember, D is the distance between the centroid of the individual box and the centroid of the entire part. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's start grinding these out. 112 B1 H1 cubed. I've got my cheat sheet here. I'm not going to try to work all these out by hand. Um, let's see. B1 is 150 millimeters times 50 millimeters cubed. Okay, and that is, let's see if I got it right here. Um, let's see, 1562500. Oh, oh, okay. Millimeters to the fourth now because I am uh, calculating area moments of inertia. All right, A we already know. Now D is the distance between the centroid of that box the centroid of the entire part, which is 62.5 millimeters. Okay, so D1 equals, uh, let's see, 75, which is right there, minus 62.5, that's in millimeters, and that's in millimeters. Now, 
normally I would care whether D1 and D2 are positive or negative. This is the one time in your life where you get to ignore signs because we're going to square it up here. Doesn't matter. Let's see, do I have D written down there? Oh, let's see, D1 is 12, and I could have looked at that. It's 12.5 millimeters, all right? I2, 112 BH cubed. This is getting kind of routine, huh? Routine's good. When a calculation becomes routine, that's good. That means that you're so used to it, you've internalized it. It's not new anymore. Hopefully it doesn't get boring, but routine is good. That means you're learning become comfortable with it. So this one's easy, 50 millimeters times 50 millimeters cubed, and that's going to turn out to be, let me see, 520833 millimeters to the fourth. D2 is, let's see, that's um, 75 minus, I'm sorry, 25 minus 62.5, and that's going to come out to, what did I decide that was, 37.5? I'm always leery of adding in my head on video. I try to do things in my head as much as I can, but when I do things on video, sometimes I mess up. So I'm going to, hopefully you'll, you can forgive me from uh, looking at my cheat sheet, even on a simple calculation like this. Okay, so we've got this number, this number, this one, this one, and we had the areas before, so let's just add all those up. If we add all those up, we're going to get, okay, we finally get 6770833 millimeters to the fourth. Now, that's an awful lot of significant digits. If I was having my students do that, we might work to four or five significant digits. Let's work to five. I might report it that way. So there you go. We have a beam with two materials. We started with a beam we don't know how to analyze, transformed it into an equivalent beam of one material that we do know how to analyze, and got that answer. So that's, that's how, you, how it works.